and would get permission from anybody to live. Why? Because if I get permission from you to live, that means you can tell me to stop living and I'll stop moving. So whoever controls you, amen, they control your motivation. Right. Amen. So, but we serve a good, good father. Amen. That's the song that he's a good, good father. That's who you are. That's who you are. That's who you are. And I'm loved by you. That's who I am. That's who I am. That's who I am. And he's a good, good father. I'm telling you, he's a good, good father. So guess what? When we are loved by God, he motivates us. He encourages us. He builds us up. Amen. That's why we got to get another sign back up there. Amen. Our worship is upward. Our mission is outward. And our edification is inward. We got to have that edification. Edification, edify means to build up. It means to construct. Y'all hear what I'm saying? So if we don't have that, it means to compose. Amen. It, it means to put together. So if we're not building ourselves, we're not building one another up, then what happens is we find ourselves tearing one another down. Amen. Amen. You tear yourselves down. You tear the ministry down. You tear each other down. You tear the pastor down. Amen. And when you start doing that, nobody want to come to a place where you're tearing everybody down in the church. Amen. Amen. So you got to be in a place where you got to be motivated and encouraged. Amen. Because if you're not encouraged, that means you are discouraging. And if you are discouraging, amen, that means you become the negative factor. And when you become the negative factor, amen, you're Debbie Downer. You're Downer about everything. And there ain't nothing going good. You're always in doubt. You're never positive. Amen. You don't never have a positive outlook about anything. Amen. But it is time, amen, to build one another up in the body of Christ. Somebody say it's time to build. Come on, say it's time to build. I need you, if you will, stand with me and get your Bibles. Amen. Hallelujah. Get your Bibles out. Amen. As we read. Amen. This word. Amen. Come on. Look to one another. Say perfect the saints. Perfect the saints. And build. And build. Come on. Look up. Say perfect the saints. Perfect the saints. Perfect the saints. And build. Turn with me if you will to Ephesians 4. Amen. 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 I got my Bible right in front of me, but I was using Amen. My my a Bible, my my Bible versus my electronic Bible. Amen. Amen. So when I get to study and I have both of them open, the electronic one, I, I have a tendency to use this one because electronic you get kind of uh, sidetracked, right? You get uh, you get a notification and you go on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Amen. And I'm like, you know what? I don't have to worry about that when I have my Bible because it ain't gonna be. It ain't going to say, you know, when I go to look on Google for something else, then I see a little banner, and I go, and they know I've been looking at Eric Dress, and so Eric Dress pop up on every page I go to now. Amen. But amen. Ephesians 4. Amen. And we want to read 11, and we're going to go all the way over to verse 16. Amen. 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 Glory to God. It says, and he gave some apostles and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. Verse 12, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Verse 13, till we all come in the unity of the faith, and of the what? Uh, of what? The unto a what? Perfect man. Uh -huh. Unto what? The measure of Okay, that we henceforth be no more what? Children. How? Talk to and fro. And care about with every wind of doctrine. By the slight of men and cunning. Whereby? They lie in a way to mm -hmm, They lie two ways. They lie, mean they tell a lie, and they wait for you. They lie, they're waiting on you. Okay? Next, but. But the speaking the truth is the Lord. Amen. Which is the head. Which is the head. Which is the head. Which is what? Head. Which is the head. Which is the even Christ. Uh-huh. Okay, verse 16. From whom the whole body, 
Wait a minute, I'm going to read that again. From whom the whole, body. from whom the whole what? Body. Uh, fit me, what? Join and what? Body. By that, which every joint supplies, according to, Make it what? Increase of the body. Unto what? The edifying of itself in love. Amen. Now, who has the uh, Message Bible version? Amen. Who can do it in the Message Bible version for me? Amen. I want y'all to hear that. You got it? Okay, please read uh, verse 16, please. It starts at 14. Okay. No prolonged and fantasies among us, please. We'll not tolerate babes in the wood, small children who are an easy mark for imposters. God wants us to grow up to know the whole truth and tell it in love, like Christ in everything. We take our lead from Christ, who is the source of everything we do. He keeps us in step with each other. His very breath and blood flow through us nourishing us so that we will grow up healthy in God, robust in love. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here I want you to understand is that what he is saying, he says, what we are doing in God, what we are doing, guess what? We are growing up and it brings about increase. But if we're not growing together, fitly together, remember I was talking about that misfit. We have to grow together so we grow perfectly together doing the work, amen, of the ministry, amen? What is that work? That's the work that God has called us to do, amen? What is that work? Amen, it's that work that causes us to edify God, amen? We have to build ourselves up. Some of us don't even pick up a Bible until we come to church, and then some will come to church and get their little phones and act like they looking at the Bible. Amen. They be checking out Facebook and see if anybody hit up on their status on Facebook. Amen. Amen. So what I want you to understand is God said it's time that we build ourselves up. Turn with me, if you will, over to Jude 1 and 20. It's only one book in Jude, but we want to look at verse 20. Jude 1 and 20. And I want us to read that together. Amen. I'm going to read that King James Version, I think, of that. Amen. Okay, do we all have it? Jew comes right before Revelation. Amen. Jew then Revelation. Comes after 3rd John and right before Revelation. Y'all got it? Amen. But you, dear friends, come on. Build yourselves up. Y'all got it? Uh -huh. Now let's read Jude 20. 1 and 20. Y'all ready? Ready. You read King. Uh-uh. You read something. Okay, I must be reading the Blue International Version. Okay, I'm sorry. Whatever version you have, read it. Ready and read. But you be faith. Holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Keep yourselves Verse 21 too, I'm sorry. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to eternal life. Okay, I'm going to read the New International Version. Say, but you, dear friends, build yourselves up in your most holy faith and pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in God's love as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus to bring you to eternal life. Now we're going to jump over to Acts 9. 9.31. Now I know that is the King James Version that I have here on my notes. Acts 9.31. So we're going to talk about building up. We will talk about how you build yourself up when you're not, uh, you're connected to the body, but amen. We're going to show you how you can build yourself up, amen. Even though with the body, we're not here together, assembled together, how you can still build yourself up. Are y'all ready? Acts 931. Let us read together. Then had the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria and were edified 
and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost were multiplied. Were what? Multiplied. Were what? Multiplied. To then have the churches, you may be seated, rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria and were edified. I mean, they were built up, right? So then had the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria and were edified. The church has to rest to be built up. He said, and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost were multiplied. Amen. And we, we're going to be multiplied. If we're going to multiply, if we're going to increase for God, the church itself has to rest. And then it didn't talk about the areas, amen, where he rested. That was all of the areas, amen, where Paul traveled. That was all of the areas where Jesus Christ had traveled during his ministry during those three years. Amen. And there was a, even in John 4, he said he must needs go through Samaria, amen, through Judea, amen. All those places, he said, uh, rest has to take place. He said, and then, he said, then once they were built up, he said, then they were walking in the fear of the Lord, meaning that they, at that time, they had respect for God. They had respect for God's word. They had respect for God's house. They had respect for God's leaders. Amen. They had respect for his word. And once they did that, say, in the comfort of the Holy Ghost were multiplied. Comfort means encouragement. Of the Holy Ghost. You're trying to get encouragement without the Holy Ghost. It does not work that way. But amen. But when you are confident, built up, constructed by the Holy Ghost, then it then it said, and the church multiply. Amen. How can we multiply? How can we increase if there is amen? No edification. So how do we edify? We go right back over there to Ephesians 4. Because in Ephesians 4, Ephesians 4 was then showing us, amen, he says for in verse 12, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So now that we have to look at, well, who is the body of Christ? You are the body of Christ. Amen. The Bible, the Bible tells us, he says that uh, God said he would not leave us comfortless, but he would leave with us a comforter. Comforter, encourager. That comforter, encourager is the Holy Ghost. Amen. It's the Holy Spirit. So he left with us someone that will encourage us. He left someone with us, amen, that will tell us to get your tail off. He left with us someone that will say, get up, try it again. Amen. That's why I'm telling you, if you have failed in anything, embrace your failure. Don't stay there. Embrace it and get up. Use it as a crutch. Use it as a cane. Use it as a walker. Amen. But get up. If you fail, amen, if you fail in your trying, try, try, try again. Amen. Don't lay there and say, oh, I failed. I'm no good at it. I never accomplished it. I never do this. Don't do that. Embrace it. Embrace the fact that, you know what, I tried, but I failed this time, but I'm going to try again. Why? Because every time you fail, you realize something you did not do the last time. So you pull that nugget out, right? You pull that thing out that you need so you can go a little bit further. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is in you and he is designed to reveal to you all truth. The Holy Spirit is in you to reveal to you all truth. Stop going everywhere looking for a word. Stop looking for somebody to pump, pump, pump you up. You are not a Nike shoe and I'm not a pumper. I don't know anybody that has a job and all they do is pump up somebody Nike. They just go around looking for somebody. Let me pump you up. Let me pump you up. Let me pump you up. Because after a while, they're going to run out of air. Amen. Yep. Only thing that is designed to inflate something is an inflator. Okay? That's when you go to the air tank, get some air and go in your tire. That's when you can have the, the manual pump, amen, that you can pump up an air mistress. Now they said, you know what, that's too much work. We're going to give you a one that you can plug, amen, they can blow air, amen, you can use your vacuum cleaner, amen, and you can pour in that, you know, you can inflate it that way. He said, but man does not have that one particular job. So stop going to folks trying to get folks to make you feel better. Come on, just you got the Holy Spirit. Amen. Y'all are going around looking for a human air compressors. <laughs> Seriously. I need you to I need you to make me feel better. Say something, say something, say something, say something. Say something. One guy told me, one young 
man said he was he was a comedian. I said, say something funny. Your nephew. Last Saturday. I said, say something funny. He said, but he just don't work like that. But every said, I love that guy. He said, he said, but it's just different little things, you know, that make it, you know, that you know, he said it's just a situation, you know, because everything is funny. I said, yeah, say something funny. Come it just don't work like that. So you said you're a comedian, make me laugh. You understand? So we always look for somebody to say something to make us feel good about us. But the Holy, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit is in you. And he said he revealed to you all truth. Guess what? If I find out something true about Sharon, even if I don't like it, it make me feel good. I'm like, oh, okay. All right. Okay, that's good. That's good. All right. All right. That's a new truth I can deal with. Okay, now that I've dealt with it, okay, now I can grow because I'm learning something new about me. Maybe that didn't really come to my mind or to my attention. Right. So guess what? The body of Christ has to learn. Listen, anybody ever accomplish something like run a mile and you think you can run that mile? And you did your four laps or you it came, or you walked a mile and didn't realize you can walk a whole mile without stopping? Cause y'all looking at my drawing. Yeah, I'm like. Only one I can see they can lift their hands up to do that is McKenna. Amen. Me too. Me too. Okay. Got you. All right, but but you know, yeah, okay, okay, me. But the rest of us. <laughs> okay, Caleb. Caleb did almost a mile last night in his flip flops. You know, flip flops. Amen. But what I'm saying is, is that you accomplished something you didn't realize then. And you, you learn a new truth about you. Uh -huh. And you're just like, wow, I did not realize that it was in me to do that. But when I realized that I could, didn't did your head stick up a little? Your shoulders were squared a little bit more? Your back, listen, you were not the humdrum, but you was like, I did that. I accomplished that. So that's what happens. And, and that's how things multiply, right? Because success attracts Success, right? If I see you successful in something, I'm going to be attracted to you. Why? Because I'm trying to be successful as well, right? So it's the same thing in the body of Christ. If I see you successful in the word, I want to attract myself to you to see what are you doing to be so successful in God. Amen. It's not that you're reading the word because I read the word, but I'm not getting the same results. But what is, is now your relationship with God, with his word, and you realize the Holy Spirit is in you, revealing to you all truth, and that thing is building you up. So now that you will realize the Holy Ghost is in you to build you up, that Holy Ghost in you help you build up somebody else. And sometimes people get built up but just by being around you and see how you're operating in your faith and operating with the Holy Ghost operating in you. Amen. So that's what I'm saying. But now if we're not growing, that means there's something wrong with our activation, something wrong with the Holy Ghost in us. Amen. That means not the Holy Ghost itself, but us acknowledging the Holy Ghost. And then there's something in us we're realizing that we got the power. Come on, somebody say, I got the right stuff. I got the right stuff. Come on, tell yourself I got the right stuff. I the right Say, stuff. I got what it takes I to encourage me. Oh, come on. I'm feeling God right there. I got what it takes to encourage myself. I got what it takes. Oh, I got the right stuff. Oh, come on, somebody. I'm feeling God right here. I got what it takes. Why? Because if I don't get built up, if I pour into you, I will be empty after pouring into you. Oh, yes. Amen. So therefore, there has to be residual. That means I got to have my own gas station. I got to have my own beefy. But my gas station is called HG. Holy Ghost. To that filling station and fill up every now and then. Hallelujah. If I thought, listen, I don't even like to drive with a half a tank. Anything less than a half a tank, I'm fussing. Yeah. My husband told me, now we okay. We're like, uh uh. Is it a half a tank? Fill up. Amen. So you got, is anybody else encouraged here? You got to know that you got your own spiritual gas station called the Holy Ghost. And all you got to do is say, fill her up. And the Holy Ghost, amen, will tap in into that reserve tank, amen. And oftentimes when we go to the gas station, every time, not often, every time we go to the gas station, do you see the gas? Do you see the gas tank? It's underground, right? But amen, but if it's out of order, if it's ran out of gas, they put the sign to say out of order. 
Why some of us walk around with an I don't want to sign on oh. us? I know that thing just. Yeah, it did. <laughs> Some of us are walking around with an out of order sign on. Mm, no games. No. Say that again. No games. No games. <laughs> Listen, I'm a gas station, but you can't come get filled up. <laughs> Somebody is coming to you to be filled up, but you ain't got nothing to fill up with. And most times they are willing to pay the price to be filled up. You better say it, Pastor. Come on. Oh, my. You better say it. Most times they will come and they will sweat their car. Yeah. They will sow a seat just to be filled up. But you ain't got nothing to fill them up with. So you keep crying and complaining to God, saying, God, I ain't got but God said I put it in. And every time people drive up to your pump, you out of order. Somebody just missed the sale. I feel God up in this place. Somebody just missed the sale. Somebody just missed the soul. Because you out of order. Fill me up till I overflow. I ain't trying to waste no gas. Because gas that run out of your gas tank on to because don't you get mad? I'm like, man, that was 50 cents right now. Oh, yes. okay. I don't know if nobody else get mad. I, I do. I want every dollar. I'm like, man, my God, I just love like, what? I want to hear the pop. I want to hear the pop. I go a little over the pop. <laughs> I want the reservoir. Oh, but he gave us some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. He said, but he says for the perfecting of the saints. It's for the edifying of the body. So if the gas, the Holy Spirit is in us to edify the body, what is going on with the Holy Spirit working in us? Is it that the Holy Spirit is not working or is it we're not working the Holy Spirit? Mm, that's good. Ooh. That's good. Ooh. 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 I know y'all gonna scratch our head today. Yeah, yeah, that, that took it. Yeah. He said, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry. This is what got me when I was up. I was up last night. I'm just like, I just said, God, I was scratching my head last night. I had to wash my hand, got up by me. I had my clothes out and everything. I said, I'm excited about this word right here today. And then you know what? It, it hit me. He said, for the perfecting of the saints. For the work of the ministry. So guess what? Now, for the work of the ministry, we're the work truck. But we go to the filling station. And I had an order sign is on there. The ministry ain't working. Drops the mic and walk off the pool. He said, he can't, he said, the reason God gave you a pastor the reason he gave you a teacher, the reason he gave you an evangelist, the reason he gave you a prophet, the reason he gave you an apostle is for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry. Yes. Not for you to get dollar bill, dollar bill, y'all. Dollar bill, dollar bill. He didn't do that for you to gain a dollar bill. Oh, amen. He didn't give, he just I gave you pastors and the prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers so that you can have a name. Wow. He said, I didn't give it to, doesn't it say anywhere so that I can control your life. He said it so I can tell you how to live your life. No, no, listen, he said, he said, for the perfecting, for the perfecting of the saints. So whatever is crooked in you, the Holy Ghost and the Word of God will come in and work in you and perfect you. It will take out the thing that is in you that is not of God. So God can make a mess into a message so that you'll be able to stand and pour it to someone else. Amen. Oh, is this helping anybody on today? Amen. For the work of the ministry. So if the work of the ministry is not taking place, what are we missing? Amen. Either the perfecting or the fivefold. And some of you right now in here, I'll pray in the fivefold, but you out of gas. Mm. You out of order. Mm. 
And the reason you're out of order because you don't know you went to five fold. Mm. Mm. Okay, let me go, let me take you a little bit deeper. It's like you, a Mercedes, and you operate. You 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 that three hundred thousand dollar Mercedes that they was just talking about on the news not long ago. And it takes only diesel. Mm. Wow. And you go and put cheap on there. Oh, you ain't going nowhere. <laughs> <Engine> <laughs> engine stall. It can't even operate. Yeah, that's what turn off. <laughs> and as beautiful as this Mercedes looks uh -huh. and as awesome and as expensive as it is it is not able to function because somebody didn't read the owner's name. Uh -huh. Somebody put the wrong thing in the gas tank and it came over. Oh, Jesus. Uh -huh. Okay, okay, we Everybody, look, 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 look right here. Okay, this is what it means. It means that your body is designed for the Holy Ghost, but you put another little enemy devil spirit. Oh. Oh. Okay. Oh. Oh. Come on. Oh. You only operate and perfect the saints based on the word of God, but you put everything else in except for the word. You said, but it's gas is designed to, to run on the car, but not if the gas costs for diesel. Right. Amen. Ethanol is a form of gas. Flatulence is a form of gas. <laughs> diesel is a form of gas. Motor oil is a form of motor oil that causes it to run when it's mixed with the oil. It causes it to do what it's supposed to do. Some Mercedes, you can put coin oil or use oil in the car and it will run. Oh, yeah. Some of the older Mercedes, they go to those those stores to do a lot of fun. They get all that old oil and all that old grease and they can use it as oil. Mm -hmm. And they can use it and that Mercedes runs off of it. That ether oil, that, 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 ether, that ethanol plant, over in Pelham, they make that out of corn. And they use that to make gas. And that's what most of us put in our car now. Okay? Along with the crude. It's a special formula that they mix. I can't tell you how to it, but that's why it'll tell you 90% or 10% even off. So that we don't have to pay so much overseas. So we have ethanol plants all over the place. It helps. That's why I guess it's going down. Because you see more ethanol plants. They have ethanol now. So those folks that came up with that right idea, now they're talking about using the soybean to create another type of gas, a, a low uh, burning fuel. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? So what happens is, is the body is being injected with something that infects it versus causing it to move. And it's called Every Wind and Doctrine. Mm -hmm. Some pastors have books named after themselves and they preach from their own book. Right. And God is nowhere in it. <laughs> but he says, he said, and I gave for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry. What causes the ministry to go when the body is edified? So now let's talk about who is the body. Everybody raise their hand. Everybody. Everybody up in here. Raise them high. Raise them real high. Say, I'm the body. I'm the body. Come on, say, I'm the body. I'm the body. Oh, real high. Say, I'm the body. I'm the body. So now that you know you are the body, now you got to realize now what you are made of. I can't even take credit for this. I found this. Amen. I was reading it. And I'm like, oh, man. I was driving so illegal this morning. Oh my gosh, but I'm so glad that God will just cover you. Amen. Amen. I just, Lord, God will keep you in your foolishness. It was so foolish, but it was so good. I could not put it down. Amen. I want to read this to you. Amen. Um, this is a message back from 1978. Amen. Amen. Caleb Perry, he saw me reading it in the car while I was driving. So don't do what you mean. He just did. Don't do that. Okay. Amen. Glory to God. Don't do that. Amen. Amen. Um, 
um, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10, uh, the apostle says, I beseech, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you may speak the same thing, that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and same judgment. The perfection of the saints is not only the individual saint matured, it is the collective unity of the whole body brought together in oneness. And I really feel that's the heart of the ministry. So now, the heart of the ministry, or the work of the ministry, is us working fitly together. Mm. Amen? Amen? Amen. If my body was missing feet, you would know that there was something going on with my body. Right. Amen? But now they have artificial limbs, and I can still stand. Amen? Right. Amen? If my body was missing half the head, and only half my head, you would realize there's something going on with my body. I'm still able to function, but half my head gone. Amen? If I was missing a limb, it would not stop me, amen, from being a part of the body, but you can tell something is missing from my body, right? Amen? Same thing with us. All of us work together, amen, for, 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 for perfecting, amen, the body, amen, for the Holy Ghost to come in and use us, but the Holy Ghost will use my feet, amen, only for me to walk. He will not use my feet for me to hear. Right. Yeah. He would, I ain't gonna even say it, Lord. She ain't gonna say it. I ain't gonna say it. I ain't gonna say it. But, no, I ain't, uh-uh. But, my elbow would look funny being my mouth. Because my elbow can't talk for me. My elbow don't even have fingers, amen, or appendages called fingers, amen, to do sign language, right? So everything has to fit together in its appropriate and proper place, amen, so that the body can operate. Amen. amen. So everybody is needed in the body. Right? I know y'all minds, y'all so real, so wrong. All y'all minds, all y'all minds everywhere. I see about three or four faces. All oh, y'all, y'all masters everywhere. Hallelujah. Said, but then there's another scripture um, that says, "Be ye perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect." Amen. So He says, "Be ye perfect." That's Matthew five forty eight. Forty eight. Matthew five forty eight. Said, "Now God's basic standard of perfection. What God wants is perfection. What God want, uh, God wants to reverse the fall." God wants to flip-flop the trouble. God wants to undo what has been done because God is out of the paradise we gain. God wants us to seek after him. How do we do that? We first of all got to be in position fitly together. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. For the perfecting. I'm going to keep going back for the perfecting of the saints. For the edification of the body. Amen. Because if one person is discouraged in the body, all of us should be feeling it. Okay, let me ask the question. Anybody ever had a headache? Raise your hands real high. Anybody ever had like migraine headaches where it hurts so bad until tears was running down to, to, to light bothers you, noise bothers you, you feel like you're nauseated. Okay? Anybody ever hurt so bad in your body that if you cough, it would hurt? Anybody, anybody ever hurt so bad that if you breathe, it hurt? Just, just, just to breathe. If they say it turned over, it just hurt. Say, say, I, say, I know I hurt over here, but I feel like it hurt everywhere else too. Anybody ever had that? Yes. Okay, so that's how it is. So if you have a, if I have a little thing, okay, let me ask another question before I hit my point. Amen. This is the caveat. Okay, so anybody ever been in bed and there was just a little grain of sand or dirt in the bed? Little bit of just little bitty tiny grain. You with your big old self, you are Amazon to that little grain of sand. And that thing aggravated you to get to get up and just 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 do, do bed all over again. Come on. It's just a little it ain't nothing but a little bitty grain of sand. A little rock. Anybody ever get up out of the bed and there's a little rock there on the floor, you stepped on it in your barefoot? Okay. Okay, that's what it sounds like. We have these things called Santa Spurs. That's what we used to call them. And you walk and you step on the Santa Spur and you like this one. It's a little bitty tiny thing. But it get up under your feet and you be just like and you be just like trying to pull it out because it's just stick bugs. That's what we used to call them. And they just and you be trying to pull them out and just like, oh, and this is okay. Anybody ever got a splinter in their finger? And that little splinter hurts. Your whole life stop trying to get it out, don't you? And then you be like, ooh, 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 ooh. trying to get it out, right? Little bitty thing, it hurts so bad, right? 
Does it affect your whole body? Yes. If I find a little bit of grain in my bed, I can't even sleep. I'm like, man, no. Baby, get up. Let's make this bed up. Let's shake it off or something. And I remember, I don't know if y'all remember the story back in the day of the princess with the pea. And they kept putting out the mattresses up on there because she couldn't sleep. And she couldn't sleep because that one little pea. And I'm like, that story don't make no sense until I had a grain of sand from the beach in my bed last night. Oh, my I couldn't stop. Oh, uh uh. We got to clean it now, Cletus. <laughs> Let's get up. And he said, no, uh uh. It's somewhere, somewhere. I don't know. It came from the basket or something. It's going to aggravate me. We got, y'all hear what I'm saying? It's the same way it is with the body. For the perfection. So if if that little splinter was in your finger, your whole body reacted to that what? Why? It just wrecked your day, didn't it? Your mind can't think of nothing else. I gotta get this out. I gotta get it out. I gotta get it out. What? So everything, the whole body is focused on what? And here's the thing, I'm gonna tell you how you know. Your feet squinch up. You don't even realize your toes are balled up into a knuckle sandwich. Your muscles are contracted because you're trying to concentrate. Your whole body is concentrated on that one the word. Now we're talking about the body of Christ. One person can be out of position and the whole body is what? Affected. Because we're not Something is off in the body and it's causing everybody else in the body to be what? If you are the feet in the body, you just like this right here. Oh yeah. Yeah, see, for the perfecting. So therefore, the body can't do anything until we deal with that what? Get it out. Make it feel better. Then the whole body say, oh. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Let a headache show up a migraine. We shut it down. We just we just shut it. You don't want it. Never ask for it. Had one right after my dad didn't realize that's what it was because I had had him so long. And right after dad passed, and I wanted to stand upside down outside. I was standing upside down trying to put my feet up in the air outside of the emergency room at Archibald. Why? Because I said that's maybe if that all the blood rushed to my head, this head stop hurting. I saw it hit my head on the wall. It was already hurting. I said, well, it seemed like they thought hit the thing that's causing it to hurt. Maybe it'll bust or something, so it'll stop hurting. I mean, it was hurting so bad, nothing helped. No, nothing. So it just shut down operation. Don't talk to me. Don't call my name. Don't whisper. Don't breathe. You're breathing. <laughs> don't breathe. Don't breathe. Don't breathe around me. Don't walk hard. Don't listen. Don't trick. Don't, don't dial the numbers on your phone in the silent mode. <laughs> I feel your fingers moving and it's giving me, it's making my head hurt. Don't shout inside your head. I hear you shouting. <laughs> Don't do it. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Because it shuts down everything. And the body can't grow. Make sense? He said, so for the perfecting of the saints. So who are the saints? You are. I say, I am the saint. He says, in three ways, the word can be understood. Number one is what I call positional perfection. This kind of perfection, and by the way, the word perfection is uh, cardiso, C-K-A-T-A-R-T-I-S-O. In Greek, karta, cardiso. It means to be fully equipped, mature, complete, full grown. When we have folk that is not full grown in Christ, it affects the work of the ministry. Because I can't send Caleb to go and drive me back to 
Mr. Thomas fell in my Ford Edge. Can't do it. You talking about? <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> we may not even make it out of the parking space. <laughs> we may be going forward and have a new model reconstructed in the church. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Amen. So I can't have a babe trying to do the work of someone mature with see, listen, he can't go and drive that big track the trailer for Paul Paul. Paul Paul going to have a job. <laughs> Do y'all hear me? So when we talk about perfection, that Carter's, um, I, I had a pronunciation just right. Katar, Katar's, Katar, Carter's, it's not it, but anyway, it's close. It means fully equipped, mature, complete, full grown. So it can have all different meanings, but it doesn't have to mean absolute sinless perfection. It can mean that, but there are three aspects to the significance. That means that for the perfecting of the saints, you don't have to be what? Perfect. God is not calling for you to be perfect. He's just calling for you to be a part of the body that as the word goes forth, you are built up. So God said, build them up every Sunday. Build them up. Build them up. Build them up. We're not going to talk about all the hell you're going through. We're going to talk about that. We're going to bear around that mountain, right? But now it's our time. It's time to build up. Build you up. Build up. Says, how can we build you up? Show you who you are. Show you what you can do. Go big girl. I can do that too. Y'all know that y'all don't know that too. Y'all know y'all said it in your mind. Everybody here ain't no big girl. I said if I'm saying go big girl, what you gonna do? Go big girl. What you gonna do? Back it up. No, 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 no
But he made the choice to stay there. He, he could have he could have stopped everything that they was doing with one word. He had angels on the side of him. God, let us get him. Let us get him, God. Let us get him, God. And he said, no. He said, he hung there. It was a choice. He hung there from the from the sixth to the ninth hour. It was a choice. Amen. Y'all understand that? Amen. Okay, so he said he did a work which when applied to you and me make us forever perfect. In what sense? Not in the sense of our daily life. So don't look and say, well, Lord, that don't apply to me because I ain't perfect. I see it every day. All of us sin and fall short of the glory of God. You ain't the only one. I mean, some of us sin and fall short in front of folks. Some of us sin at home in the bathroom when we fall in the tub. Amen. Come on. Some of us sin. Amen. When nobody see it. Amen. Them little midnight booty calls. I ain't at your house looking at you looking at nobody coming to your house at 12 midnight. Amen. So somebody may not know it. Somebody, some of you may see it just, you know, with that little secret telephone call to know the little secret text messages. Uh-huh. But guess what? I'm not going to sit there and go through and read like the uh, federal government. Amen. And read like those hackers. Read all of your little voice messages and read all of your little text messages. I'm not going to do all of that. But there's a secret sin. Amen. That, that God himself knows about and you and whoever you commit that sin with. Sometimes you ain't commit sin with nobody. Sometimes it's just your thought. I am not going to try to knock on your door of your mind and open up your mind and step in and say, that thought, that thought, and judge your sin. Amen. 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 But I want you to understand is that, guess what? So I'm not talking about just that because not in the sense of our daily life, but in the sense of our position before God. So that when I become a Christian, I am in Christ. And that's what is important. And I started to, I was in my mind to do it, say, if is there anybody here not saved, we need to open up the doors of the church before us. So that if once you become saved, then out while you get the message going on, then you can receive the word. That's good. Amen. You know why? Why? Because, listen, you are perfected in Christ when you become, when you come in Christ. When you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead. Amen. He said, with, um, uh, with confession in the mouth, we receive salvation. So guess what? We should not, we should wait to after we done preach the message. We should actually in the beginning. Oh. Are you saved? Amen. Because now that you become saved, do you want to become saved? Okay, but if you don't want to become saved, this message that's going forward right now may not help you. Amen. Right. Amen. Because the body of Christ are the ones that receive. Amen. Let's do it. Amen. I, I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm, this is what the word says. Right. So now, when you become the body of Christ, so listen. When you become saved and you receive salvation, you are part of the body. So guess what? You receive the miracle of the Holy Ghost. You receive the miracle of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That doesn't mean that the Holy Spirit is in you. The Holy Spirit is in you, but you don't recognize that the Holy Spirit is in you. Amen. You don't acknowledge. The Holy Spirit don't come and start operating until you acknowledge God first. Come on, somebody say, same, same. Same God, same Holy Ghost. So when the Holy Ghost shows up in you, amen, he shows up and begins to activate and, and operate in your life. Why? Because you acknowledge God. So when you acknowledge God, you guess what? You receive all the miracles that come with the Holy Ghost. Yeah, right. yeah. So now when we start saying, who is the body of Christ? Those that have received the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. So when you receive him as your personal Savior, now you begin to receive everything else that goes with it. The perfecting of the saints. The work of the ministry. But if you are not saved, right. that's why you have so many people in the church. But they're not saved. So they make it hard for them to do the work because they're not what? Do y'all hear what I'm saying? So that's why you may have just a small group doing a lot of work because those are the ones that are saved. I'm not saying that everybody that don't work are saved. I'm not saying that. Because you can work and not be saved. Understand? But those that are doing the work without complaining, those are the ones that are working because they know if I work for God here, I'm doing the work of the ministry. I'm being perfected. I'm doing the work of the ministry. I know my reward is going to come later. If I, if I get my reward every time I do something here, then guess what? I don't forfeit my ticket to heaven. You got your reward already. So you keep your pats on the back. I'm trying to get, I'm, I'm working for a purpose. <laughs> I 
I'm working for the glory of God. I'm working. I'm trying. Listen, I'm trying to get somewhere. Amen. Amen. You know, I still have my earthly plan. You know, be on cover jet magazine. This is what I'm doing. I'm still working on that stance right there. I'm still, you know, sitting, you know, in the corner of the desk. I'm working on it. I'm perfecting it. I'm perfecting it. I'm perfecting it. Right. Okay, but initially, my but initially my plan is to get to God. Amen. To be in that new heaven. Amen. John said, "Behold, I saw a new heaven." I'm trying to get to that Revelation 22 that they, you know, that he talked about the new heaven. Mm -hmm. I, I, not the land filled with milk and honey. We got that. Mm -hmm. But I'm trying to get to that one where they got trees with healing on the knees. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, where we can get to those those, those relationships that have been established, because I want to see my daddy. Because we're going to reconnect in those new relationships. Amen? Uh -huh. Amen. I want to see my grandma, But I want to be able to hear her talking in, in, in language. Because she was what they called deaf at the time when she left here. Amen. So I can understand her. But I want to have a daughter, granddaughter conversation with my grandma. Y'all hear what I'm saying? I want to have one with my favorite aunt that passed away. Her, day, her birthday was a day before mine. I want to be able to talk with Anne and say, Cousin Anne. But she was really like an auntie. Cousin Anne. Show me how to crochet again. You understand what I'm saying? I listen because he said all of those relationships will be renewed. Amen. Y'all hear me? I want to see my cousin Linda again. That was like my sister. He said, girl, let me tell you. I almost lost myself when you left me. When you and daddy left at the same time, I just knew my life was about over. I had something to live for. But you were so important in my life. Girl, let's talk about this thing. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I, 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 I want that. I want to be able to reignite that passion that we had when we was little girls. He said we can get that. So what I'm working for is not for here. It's not for this. So if you pat me on my back now, then guess what? And then I said, okay, it was all about me. All about. I have forfeited my train ticket to But, but the body of Christ, listen, I want to encourage you. you got something to live for. I want to encourage you and say, you know what? You're a blessing to the body of Christ. I want to encourage you. I want you to say, you know what, Lord? Thank you for making me a blessing. I want you to get to that place where you say, Lord, there is a purpose for my life here on earth. And my purpose is working to want me get to you. So if I fulfill my purpose, God, that's my key. That's my ticket, amen, to the new kingdom, to the new heaven. Why? Because ain't nobody preaching about the new heaven. Everybody talk about get it, 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 get it. Everybody keep preaching all of that. But guess what? There is something else to that. What you doing here for? Why are you here? What is your purpose? What are you doing with what God has given you? Who are you supposed to affect? Who are you supposed to make uh, uh, introduce to Christ? Well, sometimes by not preaching words, but by living the word. Amen. For the perfecting, for the building, I just want to build you up. I wish I could take what God has poured in me and just open your head up and just pour it into you right quick. Amen. And then just close it up and then you say, bam. Yeah. So I can't do that. But guess what? So what I can do is I can open up your spiritual heart and your spiritual mind. Amen. Through that of the Holy Ghost. And pour the word of God through that of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Into you. And then the Holy Ghost begin to work all down in your heart. He go all the way down to the impartation of your belly. Because guess what? We get, you know, when he start talking about your heart, do you know your heart is not this heart right here? Do you know your heart is your mind? You don't change your heart in your heart. Mm -hmm. It's an organ. Your heart don't think. It's your mind. When you fall in love with somebody, you say, I got you right here. You ain't got them right there. You got them right here. It ain't here. It ain't here. The serving ain't your groin area. That ain't even love right there. That's just a physical exercise. That's it. Because guess what? You done already made love to him in your head anyway. Oh yeah, you done had sex in your head already before the physical even took place. 
I'm serious. Throw this dog on microphone. Y'all sit there talking about I love you. It ain't your heart. Oh, my heart is broken. No, it's your mind. Because it's whatever you don't feel in your mind. When you change your heart, you have to change your heart. It wasn't your heart that has its own brain. It was you change, you have to change your heart in your what? That's why he keep telling us about our mind. Let this mind be in you that is the mind of Christ. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your what? Your mind. Because if I change my mind about you, my heart ain't have nothing to do with it. If I find out you was a liar, liar, a cheater, cheater, liar, liar, pants on fire, my heart didn't discover that. My eyes saw it, my mind formed an opinion, and my mind changed. Oh, oh. I'm trying to help somebody. I fell out of love. When you ain't fall out of love, you change because of some change because of what you saw. Oh, my. If you ain't feeling something, it ain't nothing that you, only thing you can feel is the cold and the temperature. Your heart can't I ain't feeling you right now. It's because something that happened, I have begun to form an opinion in my mind about you. And so now if the ain't the ain't no feeling. Stop telling that dog on lie. I'm coming into the knowledge about something about you that make me second guess my relationship. Oh my God, why am I here? I'm trying to decide if I want to be friends with you. Come on. Because they have come into some head knowledge. Just pissing all over that cotton right now. This whole family pissing on the cotton now. Jesus. The family involved. I'm trying to help somebody. Amen. He broke my heart. No, he didn't. Is it still working? Was it made out of plastic? Something going on with it. It was never, it was never this. It was always. It was you processing information, gaining knowledge, whether it was right or wrong, and forming an opinion. How do we get here? What are we talking about? Building up the body of Christ? Okay, okay. Well, let's, let's go back to building the body of Christ. Okay. Amen. I filled up with that Holy Ghost, I tell you. Yeah, he gave me all kind of energy. He just fueled the passion. Amen. Let me refocus. Everybody said refocus. Refocus. We are comforted by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Edify means to build up. Okay. So that means there's a couple of things we got to learn to pray in the Holy Ghost. And we got to pray in the comfort of the Holy Ghost. Two things. We got to pray in the Holy Ghost and pray in the comfort of the Holy Ghost. In the comfort of the Holy Ghost means in the encouragement of the Holy Ghost. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Because it's about what you do is about building the body up. It's about the edification. And if you're not building up the body, then you're destroying it. Ain't one day, listen, it ain't no gray area. It's black or white. If you building it up or you tearing it down. If you're building it up, you're going to see an increase. If you're tearing it down, you're going to see a decrease. Somebody's somebody been tearing down some stuff. Mm -hmm. When you complain about your ministry, when you complain about your pastor, when you complain about other leaders in the church, when you complain, listen, you've got the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost will teach you and bring you into all truth. The Holy Ghost will show you how to pray for that thing that is displeasing in your sight. Because it may be displeasing in your sight, but not in nobody else's. 
So your change of heart is going to change somebody else's heart. Meaning, guess what? You don't go in and get somebody else's heart to change them. You change their mind by what you say. Right. Amen, lights. So we want to build up. Be able to pray in the Holy Ghost. And let me tell you something, because even God had to check me. He says, listen, in his word, he said, listen, when you pray in tongues, it edifies you. It's in scripture. I got the scripture. When you pray in tongues, or when you're speaking in tongues, you're edifying you. You're building up your relationship. Amen. I want to tell you, that's how you build yourself up, when you're praying in tongues. But if you're praying in tongues or you, you're speaking in tongues, or praying in the Holy Ghost is praying in tongues. Okay? Praying in the Holy Ghost is praying in tongues. But now, when you start just going off in tongues, that confuses the body unless prophecy or interpretation follows. As in the Bible, I was reading, I'm like, wow. Because I do that, I've been building myself up, I've been giving y'all that. <laughs> My bad, I'm sorry. Forgive me, y'all forgive me. Okay, because I will do that. I go, you know, he said, you build a new up, but that doesn't build the body up. Amen. So, Lord, I stand corrected. Amen. Amen. He said, because Amen. interpretation comes. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> he just, I know. He just, he, but, right, like, if it's for you, that's fine. Build you up. How do you need to build you up? But if he have you teaching and preaching, preach. Amen. You got to teach, teach. Because if prophecy, somebody is going into prophecy, there needs to be somebody else to, 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 uh, to interpret. And he said, and with our rather, the scriptures are our rather than be two or three. Y'all hear me? That's what it's I didn't even get to that scripture, but it's there. So we got the build up for the perfecting of the saints. So when the church is built up and comforted, it multiplies. That's in uh, Ephesians 4. And 16. You got to be built up in the most, he said, built up in the most holy faith, most holy faith, comforted and encouraged by the Holy Spirit. Proclaiming God's truth to the church um, is in his common language, brings the whole church into growth and strength. So we got to make sure we're preaching and teaching plain language so that the church can be built up. Amen. Amen. Come on, stand to your feet. Say, perfecting the saints. By building each other up. Amen. Amen. I encourage you to go back and read that again and get more revelation from that. Amen. Uh, saints have to do the work. Um, if saints do the work of ministry,